this on? Yeah, I think this should be good. But check on. I just want you to be honest. Um, this is probably really hard. I know you're visiting memories that you don't want to visit, but I understand if you're scared. At any point in time, you just tell us, and that's okay. You can leave, but we really want to get this because this means a lot to us. We want to capture it in its raw state. And, uh, what, do, what do I look at? Just look right at the camera right there. Just be talking into it, and uh, we'll ask you the questions up here. So I, uh, I had just moved to a really small rural town and um, I was starting my teaching career and I'd never taught before. So it required a lot of late nights. Um, and uh, the, the first incident I can remember is I was working in my office late one night and I, I heard this, this rattling on the door like, like someone was trying to get in. And I, I tried to ignore it, but it was, it was loud. There, like I said, there was no one else in the building that I knew of, but finally I got up and when I, when I went to the hallway, I swear I saw someone else just kind of run by. And there was nothing there. So uh, another evening, um, I, was, I was working a little bit late. I wasn't there that late, but I knew that I was gonna be the last one in the building. So the doors were locked and I had to turn off all the equipment and lock up the doors for the studio. So I went into the control room and I started shutting down the equipment. And when I got to the monitor wall, I thought I saw something go past the camera. So I walked out of the control room, I went into the studio to see if I could see anything, but there was nothing there. Then when I went back into the control room, that's what really made me believe that something wasn't right. Because all that equipment that I had turned off just maybe 30 seconds ago was all on. Really, everything that happened always seemed to happen in this building late at night after everyone had gone. So I tried to change my routine. One morning, I'd stopped for coffee and I was getting ready to cross the street and I could see my car from where I was standing on the sidewalk and in the passenger seat, there was a young man looking straight at me, but he was in my car. I finally got to my car. I, I don't have an explanation of how that person got into my car. I had been thinking about that kid that I saw in the car. I couldn't get it out of my mind. The kid that I saw in my car was in that photograph. So I thought, this is finally going to answer it. After I saw that picture, uh, I went to my office and I spent some time researching. What I found was shocking. When I found the article about the car accident, it was actually a head-on collision with another driver was driving under the influence. They had a picture of the young student, the young male student who had died, but they also had a picture of the woman who was driving the other car who had died, and she looked almost identical to me. I guess this spirit or entity or whatever it was thought that I was the one who killed them, and. I wasn't really sure what to do about the situation, but I knew now I had my answer as to why all this strange stuff had been happening to me. So that was enough proof to tell me that I was going down the right road. When I started having situations at home, it didn't go away. And that's when I realized that this was way beyond me and I, I couldn't, I had no control over the situation. It was starting to get dangerous. I felt fearful for my safety. And so I thought, that's it. I finished out the semester. I packed my bags and I moved three states over. And I haven't seen anything, haven't had any issues 
since then.